Good morning and welcome to Money Wisdom sponsored by Johnson Burnetti. I'm Natasha Lubchenko here with tips on smart ways to manage our money is Eric Hogarth, certified financial planner and Johnson Burnetti partner. Eric, thanks so much for joining us. Of course. Nice to see you, Natasha. All right. So today let's discuss bull markets and bear markets, terms we sometimes hear. What do they mean, Eric? It could be, it could be confusing. I Googled this like 20 years ago because people be like, oh, it's a bull market. And, it's bear. and I'm like, oh, that sounds like exciting. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so it has to do with these animals, what way they attack. So a bear market, if you think of a bear stands up and it swoops down, bear market, we're going this way. Bull market, you put your head down, you whack it up and that's the concise version. So bull market is when things are up, bear market is the other way. All right, you learn something new every day. So let's talk about some of the differences here. So in terms of average length, what's the bull market and what about the bear market? So the bear market is shorter, but the bear market is one that typically people panic. And then, you know, we end up on, on the radio or on like a, a special news brief saying, what are people supposed to do? And the recommendation is always go to your plan and don't panic, which it's a bear market is usually when people are panicking because things have gone up typically for a long time because, you know, the bull markets can be, you know, the number I'm looking at is over 1,700 days, like a lot of up. It's been going up and up and up, and then all of a sudden it doesn't, and you feel, oh, geez, I should have done something last week. Of course, no one has a crystal ball. You need a plan and you need balance. And if you have good balance, then, you know, you know if you've looked at it a long time, it'll go down and probably come back up. So it seems like over the years, you know, it's always either a bull market, bear market. This is nothing new. So in terms of average returns, what should we know? You know, if, if you look at the stock market, right? And first of all, if you're the person, unless it's your job, if you're the person that's looking at the market every day, just, just stop, you know, because, you know, I used to hear some of this stuff years ago about, well, it, you know, if the market goes down, uh, it's only a paper loss and you haven't sold anything until you, and, and you haven't lost anything to you sell. And I hear that and be like, I don't, you know, it seems like you have less money than you used to have, but that stuff's true. Investing is a long-term thing. Now, the difficult thing in talking about retirement is you don't really know how you're going to process that when you retire and you're done making money, saving money, earning money. Um, but you know, you know, it's it's probably not different this time. And when the market goes down, if you can stick it out, it's probably going to come back. But you need a plan. You need balance. You can't keep all your money in the market if you need money, because when the market's down, you don't want to sell. But if it's all your money and you need money, what are you going to do? Right. Important things to consider there. And now, Eric, what about the time from peak to full recovery? What's the difference here? So this is, you know, we have these these different periods of times so when the market is high and it's going down and, and, and you feel not good and and don't get me wrong like we look at this all day every day it doesn't feel good you know you, you hear about warren buffett and warren buffett says i mean maybe not directly like this but a, a quote i heard years ago is you, you know you buy when there's blood in the streets like when everyone's terrified that's kind of when you should be buying you know people have a natural tendency to sell when the market's low to buy when it's high which of course is the opposite of what you should do and yet what the vast majority of people do do because we're human and again, you need balance. People need safe money. They need growth money. You think about inflation. You think about how long you're going to live. Think about Social Security. You know, when Social Security is introduced, you couldn't draw it till you were 65, and you're only supposed to live to 64. You know, it's not a typo. You heard me right. You weren't supposed to make it. Now, people live to be 100. So you need something that's growing, and the market can be a good place to do it. But you're going to go from here, down here, and you know, hopefully back here, and, and then beyond. But it's, it's time. Sure. Uh, it's time and good advice and good partnership working with people. And now, Eric, whether it be a bull market or a bear market, what's the solution here? What's the takeaway that people should know? You shouldn't have all your money in there. You know, there's advice that you read um, that could be wholly accurate, but also for you totally inappropriate. People love to talk about what they're doing in the market. And when you hear about, like, again, Warren Buffett, brilliant, perhaps most famous investor of all time, says, you know, I wouldn't own a stock for 10 minutes if I wasn't comfortable owning it for 10 years. It's time. You look at a short window in the market, it looks like this. The longer term you look, the more it looks like this. And that's not, a, you know, prediction of the future, but Google market history and take a look at what that chart is. But you need balance in what you're doing because the difference between us and Warren Buffett, you know, that advice is just, stay in the market over a long period of time, you'll make the most money. That assumes you never need any of it. And we're not Warren Buffett. You saved money in hopes of probably spending it. So it can't all be in the market, but something needs to be growing and 
talk to people about that because uh, putting all your money in CDs is not the solution either. Yep, important advice there. And so if our viewers want to learn more about this, I know you have a special offer for us today. Yeah, it's a book and it it's it's called Will You Have Enough Income in Retirement? Because retirement is not, you know, the common thing. Well, you know, I've got five hundred thousand dollars or I have five million dollars. Is that enough money? Well, it depends. Some people it's more than enough. Some people it's not. Um, retirement's about income. It's about how much money can you draw off of what you've saved? Are you being realistic? Um, so again, it's called Will You Have Enough Income in Retirement? You can get it at moneywisdomtv.com. It's absolutely free. I think it'll be helpful. I think it'll give you some peace of mind in tumultuous times. So again, moneywisdomtv.com. Um, reach out and we'll get it to you. All right, great offer. Eric Hogarth from Johnson Brunetti, thank you as always. And again, if you would like to learn more and to receive this offer, go to moneywisdomtv.com. For CT Style, I'm Natasha Luchenko, and we'll see you next week.